Kevlar Faithful, welcome back on into the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. Today, we are going to talk Cavs Summer League. I want to give you guys my perspective on two games that we've seen so far. The first game against the Orlando Magic that did not go very well. They actually looked terrible for the most part. And then a complete 180 turnaround in game number two, which was yesterday against the Milwaukee Bucks, where the team looked and played a lot better. Before we get into this one, make sure you're hitting that like button. Make sure you're subscribed down below. A large percentage of our viewers are not subscribed. Let's keep pushing that number up almost to 1,300 subs. Appreciate every single one of you, Cavalier Faithful, tuning in. Let's get right into this one. So let's just do a little bit of perspective building before I get into some of the numbers. Even though it is just box score watching for the most part, I'll overlay some highlights. I think that there's been some important developments here in the Summer League, but it is the Summer League. I feel like this happens every year, especially the last couple of years when we've had some of these second round prospects that they've, you know, come over and been in the summer league for multiple seasons now for a couple of these guys. It is the summer league. I don't know how much of an impact some of these guys will make in the NBA specifically this season. I think that it's limited. I think that through two games, if you want my honest opinion, I think Jalen Tyson is somebody who could be at the back end of the rotation. We've seen good things from him. Will he be getting consistent minutes in the NBA? I don't really think it's realistic right now. Obviously, injuries happen. Some people just might have a better look and better feel with the Atkinson system, so you do never know. But the only guy on this team right now who I think is going to be a heavy contributor is what I like to call it, will be Craig Porter Jr. as a backup point guard for the big league Cleveland Cavaliers. But with that being said, it's not that we haven't seen positive things from some of these guys. Jalen Tyson, game number one, 15 points. And just some other good stuff, you know, eight rebounds, two assists. The rebounding from Tyson has been impressive so far. I think that that's something that you had to look for and something that you're pushing to these guys as far as the summer league coach, the summer league staff, and even all the way perhaps up to Atkinson, you might hear people say, hey, you need to be able to do other things than score if you want to contribute to the Cleveland Cavaliers as far as the NBA team this year and secure yourself a, a contract that sees you consistent playing time, not just being in the G League for the remainder of the season. So he's been very efficient. He's shooting 50% from the field through two games. He's not taken a lot of three-pointers. He was one from three in game one, and he was two for five in game two against Milwaukee, but he's not afraid to shoot the ball. He's been efficient on the field goal attempts. He's rebounded the ball well. That is Jalen Tyson, eight rebounds in game number one and seven rebounds in game number two. What I really wanted to see from him is the limiting of the turnovers. And he he's done okay, I think, but he could he's could have done a little bit better because I believe when he was drafted, if I remember his scouting, he had the second most turnovers in the Pac-12 last season. That is going to be something to look out for. He had four, four turnovers in game one, and he had three turnovers in game two. So kind of the middle of the pack here. You know, you know, Craig Porter had four turnovers in the second game. Stuff happens in the summer league. You play with guys you've never played with before. You have to bake all that into the cake. But when you're turnover prone, especially as a rookie, it is going to be very difficult for you to see playing time. Head coaches can't stand that. And this is just from a little bit of personal experience and just what I've observed from the NBA over the years. If you're a younger guy and you get put in and you create a turnover as far as giving the ball away, if you make an errant pass, if you don't really know what's going on, a lot of NBA head coaches can't stand that. They'll take you out of the game. You lose trust with the coach if you can't take care of the basketball. When you're a younger guy, you have a lot to prove. You haven't established yourself in the league. You know, superstars, perennial veterans can get away with stupid turnovers here and there. It's not really going to affect their playing time. It might take off the coach, but at the end of the day, when you're an established guy in the NBA, turnovers are really, really overlooked. Even this previous season with a guy like Darius Garland, who's somebody who's not close to being a veteran in this league, in my opinion. A lot of his turnovers got you know brushed under the rug, so it's a lot different when you're a rookie. You want to see somebody who can take care of the basketball, and you want to see someone who knows what they're doing inside of an offense. Moving on from Tyson, I think I wanted to talk about him first because he's officially 
already leapfrog Bates as far as someone who's going to make an instant impact on this team. If you want to talk about the regular season outside of Craig Porter Jr., obviously Bates is just he's going to get good numbers in the summer league because of how the, the game works and how the style of play. I mean, 17 field goals in the first or in the first game against Orlando, uh, field goal attempts and eight three pointers. He's two of eight from three. Um, that's that's not going to cut it, even though he has 20 points. There's really not. I mean, we're asking you to be a better three point shooter. If you're not a bigger guy, if you're not going to be a plus defender, and if you're not going to be someone who's a primary ball handler, we need you to knock down threes. End of story there. And in game number two, he has 18 points. He takes 12 shots, tied for the most on the team. He's two for eight from three again. And he, like I said, he took 17 shots in the first game, um, most on the on the on the roster as far as people who played that game. So. That's just not sustainable for Amani. You're not going to get 17 shots on this Cavs roster if you're Amani Bates. So I need to see other things from him. And like I said, decent numbers in the second game. Six rebounds, four assists. That's something to be, you know, look up for. But only three, uh, only three rebounds in the first game and one assist in the in the first game as far as a, a total blowout. So it didn't really make a huge impact outside of kind of just chucking up shots. But it's still early. The summer league, you know just recently started there's going to be more games coming here i think that you know there's still some other people to look out for you obviously have to take a look at pete nance if kobe altman isn't really interested in finding a backup four or a backup five pete nance at six nine along with other guys like isaiah mobley are going to be into that spot luke travers did not play in the first game but in the second game 10 points seven rebounds three assists two steals plus 16 on the plus minus fills up the stat sheet. And it's not that I don't, I don't have anything against Luke Travers. I just don't see what need he fits. Does he have a high basketball IQ? Yes. Does he seem to be all over the basketball court? Yes. Can he make flashy passes? Is he able to score? Absolutely. I'm not saying he's a bad basketball player by any stretch of the imagination, but he's just not fitting any immediate needs for me. Is he is he going to come in and be a and be a sharpshooter from three? Uh, I don't think so. Is he going to you know be able to play in that backup five position? Definitely not. Um, so yeah, there's a lot going on as far as the summer league and as far as if Luke Travers could bring something to the table. He hasn't even really been with the team on the American side of the coin since we drafted him. Maybe things will change this season. Maybe they think he's developed to a point where they could use him and they could run him out there, you know, as far as bumping Mobley to the five or, or however they want to play him. But as far as what I'm looking for in the, you know, ranking of who to watch as far as through two summer league games, I got Tyson at the top. He's been pretty good. He hasn't done anything overly stupid. He hasn't looked terrible. So that's a good start if you're a 20th overall pick. Number two, I think, is going to be kind of a toss-up between Bates and Travers. Um, I think Bates is your more flashy prospect, a guy who could have been a first-round talent, who could have been a lottery guy before some some off-the-court and on-the-court issues. But from there, it's Travers. And then I, I, you know, Pete Nance is cool. I think that the Nance you know, name means a lot to the franchise. I don't see how he makes an impact. Um, on the big league squad this year, but I think that maybe goes for everyone outside of obviously, like I said, Craig Porter Jr. and then Jalen Tyson, and that might be a stretch. Tyson might be your ninth guy. If you want to get rid of an Okoro and a Levert and give him a bigger role, that's something that the front office is going to have to do before the season starts. If you here's what I here's what I'll tell people because I, I I'm excited for the Cavs basketball is back. I'm excited to see people talking about the Cavs again in a more positive light, in a more let's look toward the future. But we kind of trick ourselves here, here, guys. It's These guys are not going to be all-stars. It's very, very unlikely. And sure, it's happened, you know, that some guys in the summer league ball out and they play really good in the NBA. I'm not making commentary on that as far as remove it from these guys' talent. If you roll into the season with this roster, how is Jalen Tyson going to get minutes? If you keep Okoro, if you keep Levert, if you keep Niang on $8 million a year, where is Jalen Tyson going to play? And yeah, you got to have a deep bench and you got to have people that could be ready on a minute's notice if injuries happen. We saw that last year. But if you're going to keep the core four, if you're going to retain Okoro, if you're going to have Sam Merrill in the mix, um, 
if you're going to have Isaiah Mobley be, you know, a bigger part of your team, if he's not playing on, on the summer league squad, if he's not going to be someone who you think is going to stay in the G League all year, if you don't want to sign a backup five or four and you just want to roll with Isaiah Mobley, where do some of these guys get playing time? Where does Tyson get playing time, let alone Travers? And I get it. You probably want Travers in the G League at a minimum. You want him up with the with the big league squad to some extent. But it's very tricky when this roster seems so congested in the middle, especially with these guard, almost wing hybrids. Where do the minutes go? And I think Atkinson's going to have a deeper rotation. He's going to have a deeper bench, but it can only go so deep in the NBA. But with that all being said, like I said at the top of the video, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe down below. Give me your thoughts. Tyson's looked good. How do you feel Imani Bates fits into the mix? Do you feel like Luke Travers should be more, uh, you know, taken into consideration as far as playing time, whether it be the G League or whether it be the big league squad? You guys let me know down below in the comments, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.